Yo, 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 everybody. I'm going to show you how to make this here mosaic. Oh, yeah. Well, basically, you start in Registex and select your file. And uh, I've got from file 5 here to file 17. That's all my mosaic stuff, blah, blah, blah. So I'll just do a demonstration while I'll open up 5, and it won't work. And uh, basically, you select all the files open. I usually use the align box about 125 size, find an object, click, and then click align. And let it do its thing. Then click limit. Then click optimize and stack. And I've already made a preset for all the wavelets. So you just go to load. And I've called this one solar mosaic, so I'll load that up. And uh, it will automatically uh, do that so all I have to do is do all and save images number one and then I do that for the whole process and that's all the files I need done the next stage is in Photoshop and here's the final um, I'll close that down the next stage would be to get go to scripts you go to file and scripts and load files into stack browse and then locate where they are that will want to 13 select all click OK. You can click Attempt to automatically align source at this stage but I prefer not to. Click Open. Wait for it all to go, it doesn't take long. And then basically you've got all your files in your stack on the on this side here. Your main image in front. And there are two ways to do this. You can select them all and auto, auto align. I usually prefer to increase the canvas size downwards and manually align them myself but just to save time I will Select all, go to edit and auto align layers. Now, the important thing to do here is to click Vignette Remove and Geometric Distortion. You want to use the auto at the top here and then just click OK. Take a while, depending on what your computer specs are and the file size, of course. If you've got big files, it will take a lot longer. And there you go. And now, as you see, we've got all the pictures fairly well aligned. Some may, some may need moving, but most should be all right. Now, the one thing you'll notice is you've got all these lines here. And just to give you a demonstration, what would happen if you were to auto blend them at this stage? Well, you want to click on. Uh, I'll show you that again. Edit auto blend layers. You've got two options: panorama or stack images, stack images because that will pick all the sharpest spots from each picture and overlay them and blend them and click OK and wait for the amazing results look at that so we don't want that so undo right now the next stage can take a little bit of time but it's what I do so basically you click each picture individually use the arrays tool usually at about a size of 50 and then I'll zoom in a bit around the edges I mean if you look there you've still got the white lines so what you'll do use the arrays tool and just go around all the edges of the picture which need to be blended and this needs to be done with all 13 frames bit of a pain in the ass but it's something that has to be done and you need you need to select each frame as you're doing it. I usually do it one at a time and just have one up on the screen at a time. It makes it a bit easier for me, but that, that's preferable. Anyone else can do it the way they want. I'll just rush through this. I won't do a neat job. Dun, 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 dun. But if you don't do this, you will get those horrible lines, which just look damn nasty. And we don't want nasty. We want nice. That picture's got a strange defect at the bottom I just removed. And so on. Rushy, rushy, rushy. Rushy, rushy, rushy. Rushy, rushy, rushy. And rush. On to seven. Same thing. But it is a good idea to make sure you try and get all of the edge off because if, if you're using a the soft brush then you don't always you don't, you don't want to use a harsh brush because you don't want to 
make a strike. Uh, let's have a look. Um, demonstrate. Using one of these brushes would give you a sharp edge like that, which you don't want. So I usually use the uh, softer brush at 50, so it blends it in, which makes it a lot easier on the the auto blending when it comes to doing the final. And all these lines are are basically when you put them in Reggie stacks. If if you're stacking lots of files, then they usually move around a bit, dance around on the screen, so you get the edges of each frame which haven't properly aligned. And that, that's all that these defects are, and nothing usually to worry about. You usually have to crop a uh, full image at its best. Uh, I only used for each frame on this 50 frames, so you've got 13 times 50. Don't know what that is, I'm not very good at maths. Terrible at maths. And last one. Du -du -dun, du -du -dun. And and now when you load it all up you shouldn't see any of those lines but you might because sometimes it's easy to miss like at the top there you can up, up here you can see I have got a little bit of a line there and underneath that where's that one uh, right so that frame's got some I can hear someone messaging me on MSN not MSN, Facebook. Right, now once you've done that, if you select all of the flat layers here on the side, now when we go to, uh, well, I should know before that, I forgot about this, what I usually do is I will select each frame individually, like for instance that top on there, the one that's flashing, I will select that and try and blend it in best the best I can, like so. As you can see, you see difference there before, after, and if you do that overall, it take, takes a bit of extra time, but it just makes it a little bit more even on the blending. So anyway, back to selecting all. Go to Edit and Auto Blend Layers. Now back, it'll, it'll go straight back to the panorama, but you want stack images and seamless tones and color at the bottom that has to be selected otherwise it won't it won't blend it all in and click OK now and we should get a much nicer result now if you're happy with this result then what you want to do is you want to click on this little tab over here and then flatten the image which will turn all the layers into one layer and I'm just going to quickly put this to its right orientation which is I need to flip it vertically. I'll select all of the frame, right click, free transform, and then I'll rotate it so it's the right orientation, roughly. And click the yes arrow up here. And the next stage is a bit of a cheat, but I'm going to do this quickly. Can spend a bit more time in it. And you'll see re you'll see why you want to spend a bit more time in it in a minute. I will select all that, and I, what I'll do, I press Shift and F5, and you come up with Fill Content Aware. If you click OK, it will automatically fill that. It will put a bit of sun up there, it will try and make out as if there's something there, but if you just select that again and do the same, gets rid of that. And then you want to go around all the big white areas like that and do the same thing. And it'll put little bits of sun in the corner every now and then. So da -da 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 -da, quickly rush through and goes a little like that. And down the bottom. And back down here again. Now you see I've got a little area up here which is a little bit messed up. So you want to zoom in a little bit on that using the draw around select tool which I've just been using anyway um, you will draw around the bulk of it at the top do the content aware thing again and you'll leave with that so you want to draw around that quite close but making sure you don't crop any corners and auto fill again and it will give you a fairly good uh, little repair job there 
hopefully it won't be you won't miss out a get like that on a, a decent prominence otherwise it will really mess things up but that is your basic image so far and I usually just crop that I, I use the crop tool and I put one one on there so that it keeps a, a square picky on it if I'm doing a full disc like this I'll keep a square pitch get it fairly fairly well centered it doesn't have to be perfect but quick for a demonstration purpose right now just to show you what I was meaning about the black earlier and rush if you rush it you can mess it up a bit a quick way to, sh to look at that is HDR toning and there you go clearly you can see where it's it's filled in and made it look a bit messed up so you don't want to stretch the picture too much right basically now you're left with the full disk and this isn't very high resolution at the moment and to look at it looks a bit pixelated but here's the magic if you've used two times binding on a camera which basically halves the resolution but doubles the sensitivity and capture time for some reason you can blow it back up again and keep quite a bit of the detail not all of it obviously but you can keep quite a bit now I'm going to double the size of this picture from 1400 to 3000 pixels and you can instantly see that the detail is still there now I'm going to duplicate that layer just so I can work it a little bit and I will go to filters, I will go to sharpen and smart sharpen or unsharp mask, whichever one you you want unsharp masks quicker 100 100 amount and radius at 1 and doesn't look like it's going to make any difference actually might have to use the smart sharpen which is going to take forever so I'm not going to do that but I'll, I'll, well, I will just for demonstration A hundred, I, I usually put it on 100 and about a 5 radius and it can take a time da -da 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 -da. any time let it do its thing and it's going to take forever great okay I'm going to cancel that right so instead I'm just going to show you a, another quick method of sharpening which is also used in a lot of other photography um, I'm going to go to the, sele the layer, layer select click soft light and then I'll go to filter others and high pass I'll, I'll stick to 10 pixels and you should be able to see now if I flick that layer off on and off you can see the difference that makes already quite a big difference it really contrasts things and I'm going to flatten that layer now and then I'm going to duplicate it again and then I'm going to do the same process I'm going to soft light it and then go back to high pass again and do the same thing and you can see again it's double the contrast again but you can go over the top on this so I wouldn't do that too much you've got to learn the limits of the picture and we've got a nice soft picture there so I'm going to duplicate that layer again and I'm going to turn that layer off and select the bottom layer and then the next thing I'll do is I'll go to image mode 8 bit channel because what I'm about to do if you use it on a 16 bit you can't do it, it won't let you so if you go to 8 bit and then go back to image adjustments and variations because variations for some reason doesn't work in 16 bit if you click that what I usually do to color my pictures is I will click on the red twice and then the yellow three times and that gives me my standard color now you can see it's made the outer side a bit red and it shows up some of those defects that I was showing you earlier which we don't want so I will then put my mono layer back up and select that as a luminance layer and that will get rid of most of that, I mean it, it's, it's still there but it's a lot less in your face and it also uh, recontrasts the picture and again I will duplicate that layer like so and then I'll do the soft light thing again because it softens it when you put the color on there and high pass and that as you can see is your image
and now you can flatten that and you can do all sorts with it for instance if you have got a prominence you can uh, select that manually and stretch it but if you stretch the whole picture it will bring out that horrible back background which can be sorted with quite a bit of TLC but I, w I can't do that in this demonstration as it would take too much time but just quickly this prominence here for example I will draw roughly around it like so and then I'll go to select and refine edges I will feather it to about two so you can just see the edges are starting to go fluffy click OK and then you should be able to get your levels up and stretch that a little bit like so and it doesn't look too out of place so if you do this around all the uh, prominences in areas like that then you can get around the uh, horrible black outline bit which just looks messed up and that is basically how I did my image this was a bit rushed so it's not as good as the uh, Oh hello. And it seems that my uh, video has run out. So, yeah. Anyway, that was how that's done. I'll put a picture up anyway. Blah, blah, blah. But yeah, that's how it's done. I hope this has been educational to you. If not, damn. What a waste. But, anyway, there you go.